When adding power to your kayak, whether it's for adding some LED lights, some running lights, some charging ports, or even just to add a fish finder, you have a couple of different options nowadays to go with. You can go with a DIY style that's a little bit cheaper, or you can go with the plug and play. Today I'm gonna to be installing some power on this kayak and I have both versions here in the shop so I figured I'd make a video and show you the different types, what the difference is in installing them and how much the cost difference actually is. Y'all stick around. Right, guys welcome back to the channel and if you're new here my name's TJ welcome to kayak USA so if you follow along with the channel you know that recently I picked up a new boat I got the new green Hobie pro angler and this is my old yellow banana boat and when I got the new kayak a few weeks ago I transferred all of my gear from this boat to the new boat so I could use it and that included my yak power system that I had built into this boat and now I need to fix it. I don't need to leave these big holes where I removed everything from this kayak. And I'm gonna be in reinstalling a Yak Power Kit in this boat to fill these holes. But I also have some, I've kind of got a mix on this kayak of the DIY style setup with the Yak Power stuff. So I figured I would go over it in today's video while I'm reinstalling this on the new boat and kind of show you guys the differences because I get a lot of questions from you guys about why you would pay the extra money for the Yak Power stuff versus the, you know, the cheaper DIY style Amazon purchases. And there, there are some differences in installing it if you just want to plug and play this is the best way to go, but if you got some DIY in you, you can do a little bit of wiring, you know, a little bit of troubleshooting. This is, could be a better option for you, but today we're gonna go over to the whiteboard. I kinda got a drawing up, don't make fun of my drawing today, but I've got a drawing up to show you how you go about wiring up each one of these in your kayak, and you can kinda figure out which would be best for you to go the Yak Power style or the DIY style. And by the way, this video is not sponsored by Yak Power, but this is something that I have been using in most of my kayaks over the years. It's just a really easy way, and you'll see in a minute why it's kind of a simple way to go if you can afford to go this route, because it is kind of pricey compared to this stuff. So let's go over to the whiteboard and I'll show you what I mean. All right, I feel like a teacher with my little pointing thing and my, my chalkboard here, y'all pay attention. So this is the drawing that I got, and it is, uh, I am an artist, guys. I mean, come on, can't you tell? But this is my battery, so I kinda, this is a dividing line, so this is two different setups. This is my Yak Power setup, the way that you would do it, and this is the Amazon, the cheaper, one of these guys right here things. So you can get these in multiple options. You can get them where they're in a straight line or a four-way, you can get five, six, however many you want, and you can kind of change them up where they've got either all switches or you can do a couple of USB ports, 12 volt ports, however you want to do it. The possibilities are kind of endless with this, as long as you know how to wire it and do it the correct way. So first we'll go over the Yak Power side and you'll kind of see how this works and how I like to install them and why I go this route when I work on a kayak or if I'm rigging up someone else's kayak, I always refer to them to go this route versus the Amazon route. Back in the day I did this, but now I'm back over to this style here. But so what you got here is you got, it, both of these systems are gonna run off your battery. So this is, this is my battery here. And you're gonna have a positive and a negative and it's gonna go to the Yak Power main box. And it's kind of, what do they call it? They call it the, includes controller and relay module. So I guess that would be called your relay module. And I'll show you how I've got it set up in my other boat in just a minute when, and I'll show you this one when we unbox it. But you got your power, you got your positive and negative. It comes from your battery to your relay box. Then you're gonna have a special cord that plugs up and it's gonna come out to your switch panel or your, your button spot. So the, you're gonna have a button area on your kayak and if you know what I'm talking about, you know, but if not, I'll show you in just a minute up close on the other boat. And then off that same relay box, you're gonna have several different little pigtails that come off and they're gonna have SAE plugs on them so that they are quick plug and play. And that is the main reason I go with this because you can change out this at any given moment. If you've got running lights, if you've got interior lights, your fish finder, power control spots where you just wanna have a USB port so you can charge your phone on your kayak, you can switch these around anytime you want. You don't have to do any cutting of the wires. The only downfall with this is 
you have to go with the Yak Power lights. You have to go, unless you do want to cut and splice. Now you could cut and splice these SAE ports off and go with a different style if you wanted to, but I don't recommend doing that. I recommend just, if you're gonna go with the relay switch setup from Yak Power, they've already got all the running lights. They've already got all the interior LED lights. They've got the plugs for your fish finder. They've got everything that you need to go ahead and plug directly into this without doing any wire splicing at all. I mean, this is just plug and play ready. And that kind of reflects the price. I think that I picked up this kit for $89 on Amazon. And today I will have everything that I talk about today, I'll link it in the video description below. So if you decide you wanna go one of these routes, you can use those links I've got for you in the description and go that route. But let me go ahead and open this one so I can show you what this comes with. <clears throat> So this is their cheaper set. Now you can get them where they, they're included with a bunch of extra pigtails, charging ports for your fish finder, plugs, and lights if you wanna go that route. I went with just the $89 box and the only two things that come in this box is the relay and your power panel or your push buttons, you know, wherever you wanna put your ac access to your, your control system, I guess. So let me unbox it really quick. I'm gonna try not to stretch this video out too long, but I do wanna help you guys out. Y'all ask the same questions a lot and I feel like I don't answer you as good as I should, you know, in the emails that you send. So here's what this looks like. And this is the relay box. So this is gonna be that little guy that I got drawn right there. See how it looks just like it? Come on guys, look at that. I am an artist, but so this is the Yak Power relay box. Here's all your pigtails. And each one of these actually is numbered and it correlates with the numbers on your button panel, which is this guy right here. Now, I will say that Yak Power makes a couple of different versions of this. If you don't want to drill a big hole in your kayak to flush mount your panel, they've got them now where they're actually wireless. So you could essentially hook this up inside your kayak, run your all these pigtails to your lights, you know, your fish finder plug and stuff like that. And instead of drilling a big hole, they've got one that is this, but it's completely wireless. And you can just mount it like on the side rail of your kayak and a little track system. It comes with a little mount where you can just stick it basically anywhere you want and run it wirelessly without drilling big holes. So it is a little bit more pricey though. I will say that. I think this one was their cheapest way to go with the Yak Power system. And now I get to add lights and stuff as I wanted to. But the good thing about me adding this kit to the banana boat is I left the lights on the boat. So I left the interior lights. I did steal this kit when I got the new boat and my running lights, which I'll show you these. I've got the running lights right here. So I'm gonna replace the running lights on this boat from the ones that I stole from my new boat and the Yak Power kit today. But like I said, plug and play. It is pricey. I think these running lights, I don't wanna lie, I'll put it up on the screen right now. I think they were probably 60 bucks maybe or, or 50 bucks, something like that. But it is pricey, but you're paying for the simplicity and actually how long they last. I have never had a set of these go out on me and I've ran, I've switched a set of these from three different boats at one time just changing as I would upgrade kayaks, I would change these over and they worked really great. So I'll link these in the video description if you're wanting to add running lights or interior lights so you can just get them. But like I said, the good thing, they're plug and play. The bad thing is it is pricey to go this route, but once you do it, I think it's kind of a one and done thing. You get it set up the way you want it and you can just go from there. And if you decide you wanna change these up, like I said, you just literally unplug your SAE port like if your lights plugged to this one and you decide one day I want to run a fish finder, I don't need those lights anymore, you just unplug the, you know, the lights and you plug your fish finder port up into it and then you got that same button that used to do your lights, now does your fish finder. So that is that. <clears throat> All right, now we're going to go to the other side of the board. That was the Yak Power setup. Long run, pricey, but it's going to last and it's going to be the cleanest install, I think, on your boat. All right, over here on the Amazon side, like I said, you can get these in several different shapes. You can get the rectangles, the squares. I don't know if they got any round panels, but if you look on Amazon, I'm pretty sure you'd probably find them. Uh, people use these in everything from their you know, transfer trucks. You can put them in dune buggies, but a big thing nowadays is people put them in kayaks. And if you've been with me for the last four or five years, you know that I've put these in a lot of kayaks. And the way I do it is when you get it, these are basically just pigtailed off of each other. So you've got your main 
red and black wire that's gonna come from, notice there is no relay system involved in this, which the Yak Power, you got your relay system with a separate push button place where you can control everything. This is not that, so don't get these confused. These are not the same setups at all. You have to kind of DIY this one to make it function the way this is. And what I mean by that is when you install this Amazon one, you're gonna have to decide whether you want these, these ports right here on the thing to be switches or if you want them to be the actual USB ports and you know 12 volt outlets where you're gonna actually physically plug up your lights or your fish finder and stuff like that. And if you do that, just keep in mind, you're gonna have to cut a pretty big hole in your boat. You know, the way I would do it is I would cut four individual holes and then wire it up on the inside, but still, you're gonna have a pretty big hole in your boat and you gotta have a good spot to be able to do this. And another downfall, as you can see, I'll show you really quick to compare them. This is what you would mount into the side of your kayak. See how thick it is? It's about two inches thick. Actually, I, you, don't, you can't see the kayak in the frame right now, but this fits perfectly into like a two inch thickness on the side of a Hobie. There's no way this would ever do that because if you look at the thickness of this, you gotta include these wires that, can you see that? I hope I'm getting all this on frame, but you gotta include these wires that stick really far off the back of that. So you gotta think about that. So if you're if you're looking to rig up your kayak, if you're new to this and you're wanting, you just got your first kayak, you're wanting to add wires and power and lights and all this cool stuff that we all like to do, keep in mind that you can't just pick a spot on your boat and think that you're gonna order this and it's gonna fit. If you've only got this much room, this is not gonna go in that spot on your kayak. So keep that in mind, this won't work that way. You gotta find somewhere where you've got access to the back of this. You, that's another thing, you have to be able to get to the back of this to be able to plug all this stuff up, to be able to put your retaining lock uh, nuts on the back of these, and you gotta be able to get to it. So you, you gotta keep that in mind that you gotta have room for this. But anyway, I'm getting off track. So if you want this to function the way this functions, you're gonna have to make a choice. You're gonna change all these out and order individual switches like this thing here. So basically the way this one is, is you got one switch, you got a little voltage meter, which tells you how much juice you got in your battery. I got a 12 volt cigarette lighter style plug. And then I got a little dual USB charging port right here. Now, if we wanted to use this the way it was, this power port would, con you know, this would connect to your battery and it would give power to this. You would turn this switch on right here, which would turn power on to these three options. And if you wanted to use it the way it was, you'd have to plug your fish finder up here and you really, or your lights into that cigarette lighter plug and it's really not practical. It's not what you would wanna do. So if you want this to look like the Yak Power setup, you would have to take all of these out and then convert these to switches. So for example, if we're using just this little four, four slot one, one slot has gotta be for the power to this. So keep that in mind. You're automatically losing one of these slots because this, this one actually turns the power on to the rest of these. And then you would have these switches and the rest of them and you could run pigtails out for lights, pigtails out for a fish finder, and then your bow lights, and you could have individual switches right here, and you could do it yourself, it could be a DIY thing, but just keep in mind, you've got to run those wires, it's not plug and play, so you've gotta be able to cut and splice wires, make sure you use heat shrink and do it the right way, and you could essentially build a nice looking setup maybe cheaper than you could go this route, because by the end of the day, if you went with the Yak Power System, and I'm just gonna spitball here, but say you give 100 bucks for the Yak Power System, and then you buy your bow lights and then some internal lights, they're about 30 bucks a set, you're looking at around, let's say 200, 225 bucks for that whole setup. And I know you think, man, that is crazy, but that gives you ports for your fish finder, that gives you push button for your lights, and everything is there. now. Mind you, this is minus a battery. You still gotta buy a battery for your boat and that's up to you which way you wanna go. I would suggest that you always, if you can afford to go the, that route, it is the best way to do it. Because in the long run, I think these are cheap now. You can get these for 25 bucks, 30 bucks at the most. And there's a million of these different styles. I'll put some on the screen right now. You can just scroll through Amazon and see all of the different colors you can get, all of the different ways that these you can order them. And But at the end of the day, if you wanna set it up 
to operate like that other system. You've got to buy your switches individually. You're gonna have to do some troubleshooting and some wiring on your own in order to do this, but you could set it up and you're gonna have to drill a bigger hole. And in the end of the day, you're probably gonna be around 100, 150 bucks after you find the lights that you want off of Amazon. Uh, you could probably save some money going that route. You can go a cheaper route and buy all of this stuff off of Amazon. You, everybody sells these lights and you can get them as cheap as I think 10 bucks for a set of two LED lights if you wanted to put some in your boat. But at the end of the day, you're gonna have to do a whole lot of troubleshooting. You're gonna have to do a whole lot of extra wiring and you're gonna save probably a hundred bucks. And if that's worth it to you, hey, by all means, do it. If you can make it happen, I've done it on several kayaks and it turned out great. It works just fine. But if you just wanna do it the clean, super quick, easy way, you can go with that little expensive, more expensive way and go with that yak power set. It's a little dark on the side of the shop, but I'm gonna to try to show you the best I can. So here is the yak power little push button control panel. And you can see it barely sticks out of the boat. It's really close to being a, it's as flush mounted as I think you could get. And the way this bad boy works is you hit your power button, it activates power to the whole panel. And I've got number one going to my graphs. I've got my B actually goes to my bow lights. As you can see here, I've got the red one on this side and the green one on this side. And these are three years old and they were on my other boat. And you can see how nice these things still are. That's why I'm saying the quality is there in this stuff. So, and here is how I've got it mounted on the inside. So I've just got me a little PVC board hanging on the front hatch and I've got it just Velcroed and stuck right there. It's nice and clean. All the wires are contained. And here's how everything hooks up. So these are my bow lights. If I can show you and see how it's got the B on there that correlates with the B on my push button. And they just plug up right there with that SAE port. If I wanted to change these out and add something different, I literally just unplug that right there and plug up whatever else I wanted to add to it. It's, it's that simple. Now, if you're wondering how big of a hole you have to drill to mount the yak power, it is this size right here. And this is what I was saying. See how thin the sidewall of this kayak is? And that yak power system mounts right there. And there is no way that that other one would have ever mounted in this spot right here because there's literally just not enough room. I mean, it's nowhere near enough room to mount that panel right here so that I could just reach down with my right hand and push the buttons and activate everything. But I do already have a few of these DIY ones in the boat. As you can see right here, I've got me a little 12 volt thing where I can actually plug up a fish finder. If I wanted to mount a fish finder here, instead of running wires, I could just have it where I can plug it right there. And on this side, I've got a little USB port that I think I actually did an install with you guys a couple of weeks ago whenever I added my front camera mount. This is where I would plug up my front camera and keep it for all day power on my camera. But yeah, so I'm gonna incorporate kind of both of the systems, the DIY style. This I will have ran to the same battery that runs my Yak Power stuff. Here is my Yak Power lights on the inside which I left in here. I don't have any in the new boat yet. I'm gonna add them later. And everything will be operational from that right there. So when you're wiring this Yak Power system up in your kayak, I'll show you kind of how easy it actually is. So you got your main controller here that comes off your relay box. It's got its own individual plug, so it can only be plugged up in one spot and it's got a watertight O-ring on it. It screws tight on there so you can't accidentally unplug it. And then you got two separate units here. And it's, they make it as simple as can be. So I'm gonna run my wire down into the hole of my boat. And the way the screws work, I hope you guys can see this. The way the screws work on the mounting, you got three of them. And when you tighten, once you slide this into the hole and you turn this screw, it flips over a little lock. And the lock flips behind your hole and when you tighten it up, it actually pulls that lock all the way up to the plastic of your kayak. All three screws do this and it, and it bolts it into where you need to be. And then if you ever need to change it, you just twist it and it'll turn that lock over and you can just slide this right back out. So they made it as easy. I mean, anybody can install one of these. They made it as easy as you could do it to mount one of these. So this is how quick that you can mount one of these systems. I'll do it really fast for you. 
You push it into the hole, just make sure you drill the hole the correct size. And now you just tighten up all three screws. And just like that, the power panel is locked into place. It's not gonna come out. It's got a gasket around it so water can't get around behind it. Then you just reach in here, you pull out the cord, and then you plug it up to your relay box. And another thing I did wanna mention, I forgot to mention it when I was on the board telling you about the two different types of setups. A lot of you guys asked me where to put your fuses. And what I like to do is, as you can see, the Yak power system in between the main battery and the relay, it's got a built-in inline fuse. That works great. Uh, it protects everything if something was to go bad with the battery. It would protect everything on the other side of this relay. That fuse would just pop and you'd be good. What I do like to do is I run another inline fuse on the spot where I would put my fish finder. So like on my other boat, my number one goes to my Garmin's. I have another inline fuse from my power box, that, I mean from my relay box to my Garmin's. So it's kind of double fused. I don't really mess with it on the LED lights. I don't, I don't worry about them much at all. So rule of thumb is I always run one in line with my Garmin's or my fish finder, and I've got one in line that runs to my main uh, relay box here. And now that all there's left to do is for me to plug my battery into this right here. And the battery that I'm gonna be using in this kayak is just an old FPV power battery that I had laying around here in the shop. It's 17 and a half amp hours and it's gonna be great for my wife just to, you know, charge her phone or, or use a radio or something like that out here on the boat. So I'm gonna pop it on here. I think this thing was actually designed for these Hobies with this little mountain plate because it pops right there on that little centerpiece. I know you can't see it. I'll show you up close here in just a minute. And yeah, this thing is ready. So I'm gonna grab the camera, show you how I've incorporated the little DIY Amazon plates alongside of these jack power systems in this kayak and show you how I've got everything kind of tied together. And by the way, I know that I have been sniffing like that the entire video. Every time I would watch the footage to see if it was right, I would notice that I just keep sniffing. I'm getting over a cold, guys, and I, Subconsciously, I, I'm trying to keep up and not do it into the mic that's on my shirt, but I've been doing it the whole time. I realize it and I apologize. Well, first things first, ignore the big rat's nest here. I will be bundling these together and zip tying them, making it look a little bit neater. But here is the relay box we put in. For now, we just get to kind of slide this out of the way, drop our box in and act like it didn't even happen. And here is our push button panel for the Yak power system. So you hit the power button, turn it on, just like the other one in my boat I showed you. Except for this one, you hit number one and it powers up this little USB panel that I've got installed up front. Now, this is just a little two slot one that I got off Amazon and I got it here for charging my phone and my camera. Whenever I was using this boat, I had a camera mounted here and I kept it plugged here to run off my battery. If you come back over here, I've got the B wired up to my new bow lights. I went ahead and installed these. I got the red and the green on just like that. Turned out great. I didn't show on this video how I did that, but I'll link the video right here where I've given detailed instructions on how to install those jack power lights. You hit this M, that is my mid. I've got some blue lights that light up the bottom of the boat really good so at night you can see how to rig your baits, turn all these off. And then I got S for stern, if you hit that button, I've got a couple of blue lights here off the back of the boat and it kind of lights it up on the water. Early morning it helps out a lot, it makes you pretty visible out there. And then two I just have open, it'll probably be for a little cheap fish finder that I put on here for my wife. And yeah, that is it. I hope this video was able to help some of you guys out when you're trying to figure out if you wanna go the DIY route for adding power to your kayak or the plug and play way. I don't think a lot of people realize how much extra stuff you have to buy in order to do the DIY stuff. And in the long run, you end up spending almost just as much as you would just going with the plug and play stuff. So hopefully I was able to fix that for some of you guys. You were able to learn something from this video. If you did like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up. And if you're new, hit that subscribe button. I've got a ton of videos like this on my homepage. Be sure to go check it out. I've got stuff from modding and tricking out just about any kayak you can think of, kayak trailer stuff, camping trailer stuff. I got it all on my channel. So y'all subscribe. I upload every Thursday at two o'clock and I'll see you next Thursday at two o'clock.
Peace.